You know him from the big screen TV and stage. He is award-winning actor Roger Genver Smith. This Berkeley native has created a powerful solo performance about Otto Frank, the father of Anne Frank, whose diary about life under Nazi occupation sold millions of copies all over the world. Now, Roger brings Otto Frank to the stage at San Francisco's Magic Theater, and he is here to tell us about it. Welcome to Bay Area Focus. Good morning, and uh, thank you so much for inviting me. And of course, everybody knows about his daughter Anne's diary, but I've never heard of the diary of Otto Frank. I didn't really think much about his story. What is it? Well, this is a story of a man who um, lived a long and very productive life. He came back from Auschwitz, um, narrowly escaping death, he was uh, in front of a firing squad, in, in fact, and um, he miraculously escaped, uh, knowing that he had lost his wife, but hoping that his two daughters uh, were still living when he returned home to Amsterdam, where, of course, they had been hiding in hiding for almost two years. It was determined that he had, in fact, lost his daughters, and the diary that his daughter Anne uh, had been keeping for that um, whole time of hiding was then given to him. And it was um, quite a moment. Uh, in fact, it was many moments that he took to get through that diary, as you can imagine. And he then take, took on the responsibility of getting his daughter's work out to the world. Uh, it was, of course, translated uh, into multiple editions, multiple languages, um, it was adapted for the radio, for film, uh, for the stage, of course. And in fact, the book is the uh, largest selling nonfiction uh, piece of literature, second only to the Bible. Of course, it is very, very heavy. What has it been like for you to, to form this performance and, and to bring it to people, uh, you know, does that been difficult for you emotionally? Well, as the father of uh, two daughters myself, of course, uh, it is um, very striking for me every time that I do this work, that I dive into this story. Um, but it's a story that I think should be told. Um, this man carried a tremendous burden uh, with him. There were those who accused him of making up the diary. They claimed that his daughter could not have written it because it was so brilliant. Uh, they claimed uh, that he was exploiting the tragedy of his family, exploiting the tragedy of the Holocaust. It's a one-man show, solo performance, which is a unique art. What is it like to be out there and just carry this all on your own? I don't feel that I'm carrying it on my own, really. Uh, I feel that I'm bringing a lot of people with me, uh, thousands, maybe millions, uh, who have inspired uh, this work, who continue to inspire this kind of work. Mark Anthony Thompson, of course, the brilliant sound designer, is with me as he has been for the last 30 years of collaboration. In fact, our collaboration started at the Lorraine Ansbury Theater in San Francisco with a piece called Christopher Columbus, 1992. But Mark Anthony and I don't want our audience to come to the theater and leave the theater and say simply, wow, wasn't it horrible what happened way back then? We want our work to resonate uh, in the present moment. And to that end, our Otto Frank speaks beyond uh, his daughter's time and beyond his own time as well. You mentioned uh, collaborations. A um, little bit of a lighter note, you've done a, a, a lot with some very big names, including Spike Lee. <laughs> Tell us about that experience. Yes, yeah, Spike Lee um, and I have been collaborating for more than 30 years. I've done more uh, work with Spike than any other actor. Uh, Spike, in fact, has directed a couple of uh, my pieces, a Huey P. Newton story, 
which is currently streaming on Hulu, and Rodney King, which is currently streaming on Netflix. Uh, we've done a wide variety of work, and I feel very blessed uh, that uh, Spike and I are of the same generation, and that politically, culturally, I think we see eye to eye, even though he's remarkably uh, shorter than I am. <laughs> yeah, you know, there's always boxes. That's how they do that on the <laughs> stage, right? Uh, since you, you have done TV, film, stage, what is your favorite medium and why? <clears throat> I always return to the stage. It's live. Um, it's, it's an energetic push that you don't get in front of the camera, although I certainly feel blessed to be on camera with you uh, today. But um, well, to, to be in a, in a live give and take uh, situation, I, th I think is, uh, is, is the way that I want to continue uh, working. And, you know, st uh, film is good. You can reach, you know, millions of people with film that you can't necessarily reach on stage, but um, there's something about uh, getting out into a theater and hearing the buzz of the crowd and trying to make things work uh, moment to moment with no retakes. Yeah, and the fact that we can all do this again we can all do this now that we can, um, you know, be together oh, this after is a, very a rough special. couple of years. Sean San Jose, the new artistic director of the Magic Theater, had a place reserved for us in his new season. And we are so, so happy uh, to be with Sean and to be in collaboration with not only the Magic Theater, but with the Campo Santo uh, Ensemble. Uh, that um, Sean has brought with him into uh, the Magic family. All right, Roger Genver Smith, thanks so much for your time today. And a reminder, yeah, Campo Santo presents Otto Frank March 12th through the 17th at the Magic Theater in San Francisco's Fort Mason. If you want to check out tickets or other information, visit magictheater.org.